Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishwash and welcome you all in my channel Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. So today we are going to learn preparation of an another animal solvent that is acetone D6 or this you may say hexa deutero acetone you may also consider. So this its importance is that it is used in animal spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So that's why we will learn how it is prepared. Simple. This preparation of this acetone D6 is little simple. It is prepared from its parent proteum derivative that is acetone in presence of D2O and second a base that is lithium dioxide and it is prepared, it is actually remain in D2 and it's reacted and ultimately it produces CD CD3, CO, CD3 and what should be D2O means water will be produced, exchange of the no, it will not water, it will be HOD, okay. Well, there may be probability very less water preparation because this is almost a pure D2O we are taking from this reaction. Now question how this D2O is prepared? This D2O is produced by fractional distillation of sea water. Fine. That's all. Now how acetone is the industrial product by cumin phenol process it produces. I have already discussed previous video. So you please visit. Now question how this is prepared? This lithium deuteroxide is prepared by using lithium wire. Lithium wire plus dipped in D2O. What happens? It reacts with D2O and ultimately what it produces? It produces lithium OD plus D. Now question why lithium sodium could be? So another interesting point is that it creates a PPT. So that is a very easy to understand. Okay. So this is now fine. This is a preparation of lithium D2. So this is so lithium D2 solution is taken along with that D2 is added and along with that acetone. And remember, acetone is highly miscible with water, so no issue of phase change or different phase because organic and inorganic molecules. So this is fine. Now what happens in this case? This lithium dioxide. So in this case, base is OD. So we know that ketone in presence of base undergo uh, this enolate formation. So what it produces? CH2. By the way, if you feel any difficulty understanding, please visit Alon condensation video. Concept is cleared. Enolate formation. So fine. So in this way, what it produces? CH3 minus. And this, uh, this is actually resonance stabilized. Okay. So in this way, it will come here, it will open up. So you may consider that CH2 double bond CO minus C this is the resonance stabilization now what happens in the next C this is actual not irreversible process this is a reversible reaction now what it can do in the reaction medium there is DOD means D2O so what it can do it can abstract this proton so in reaction medium what is produces CH2 C double bond O CH3 now there is D now, next thing what can happen? Next thing you can say that, sir, another molecule of this, so in this case what it produces, this OD, means this base OD minus is regenerated. So that can abstract two things. One can, they can abstract proton and one another thing that this hydrogen. Now, statistically if you think there are five hydrogens, so statistically more probability that five among, five among one could be abstracted. Second thing. Chemical reactivity wise, if you see that this CH bond is slightly, slightly more weaker compared to this CD. That's why both statistical point of view, point number one, chemical reaction point of view this. And since this is a reversible reaction, so this small factor also dominates. Okay. So what it can do, it can abstract anywhere from here, here, here. So in this way, this reaction will continue. Another thing. So now let's think that after continuation of reaction what it produces that is a CD2H CD3 then in this case statistics is going against so what does it mean in this case what should it should happen see actually in this case also this proton could also be abstracted why I am saying this because as I told that this carbon hydrogen bond is slightly weaker compared to carbon deuterium so probability of breakage of this bond is more so that's why OD minus will regenerate first point and second point again it will react with D2O. So ultimately what it will produce? It will produce CD3COCD3. 
Now question, why I have written HOD not H2O? The question is, the answer is that, see, when the first proton abstraction, OD minus is abstracting a proton from here, better to say, this is CH2 here, so OD minus is abstracting. Now, then what it will produce? It will produce HOD. Now, so this is the this is the thing. So in this way, HOD produced. But you can say that sir, that one HOD molecule further be deprotonated and produce HO minus uh, this thing, and that HO minus will abstract another proton. For just think from logical point of view, we can say anything. But in statistically, how much? Because when a reaction is happening inside a chamber. One molecule is surrounded by another molecule and we know how the reaction happened. First of all, prop, if pro, collision, collision in proper conformational orientation and energy matching. So, what is the probability of pro, call, collision between this production or this production? So, from that thing we can say HOD will produce not a um, H2. Okay, or better to say majority are HOD. Very minimum you may get HOH, but that's a real thing. Fine. So that's how this will produce. Now, what interesting thing we have learned? We have the interesting thing based the basic principle behind this reaction is enolate gener reversibility of enolate generation. Remember, reversibility of enolate generation in presence of base. So that is actually the main guideline principle for this preparation of this deuterium uh, acetone. Now another thing you can say that is that you are saying that it will be our product. Fine. Can you guarantee that 100% of will be this? There may be, there may be some compound which is actually not this, some this. Obviously possible. But you, if, you, if you say that, sir, come to back, there could be another thing that's CD3, CO, CH2D, or here one hydrogen. So probability of those things varies, or probability of this also varies. One thing, probability slight amount could be there, and actually it remains, but it is not a problem. You can say that, sir, we need this, it, we need pure, so slight amount of this could be a problem. But actually not. Why I am saying? When you do NMR spectroscopy, every NMR solvent has a particular peak position. So, this is not NMR active. But if you look at this, this is NMR active. So, you will get a peak in NMR spectroscopy. Okay. And that peak will help you to identify that, okay, this is the standard peak of my solvent. Now, standard peak, peak position it properly such that all the rest of the solvent means reagent peak, whatever you are analyzing, those peak will be position will be standardized. So that is not a problem of presence of slight amount of this impure this as an impurity. That is not a problem, that is an advantage. Okay. So this is the overall discussion about preparation of acetone D6. Now saying what you have learned, preparation in presence of base uh, and D2O. And it will produce this diatrotate chloroform and HOD and another thing in the reaction medium, whatever is produced, you can say what is the mixture? Mixture is mixture could be three things. This slight amount, maybe this or maybe D2. Actually, this doesn't remain because reactions are designed in such a way that all of this consumes. So in reaction medium could be this diatrotate acetone, HOD, and D2. Okay, so through fractional distillation, you can separate this and by uh, drying like calcium sulfate, those type of anhydrous reagent, you can dry it completely and get this reagent. So this is the overall discussion. Thank you for watching.